I always find it really hard when starting a new career mode to decide what kind of tactics I'm going to use. I can never figure out if I'm just going to copy a real manager, or if this time I'll be making my own style based on the squad that I'm using. Well, over the years, I've tried a bunch of different tactics based on real teams, and today I thought I could share five of my favourites. We'll be starting with the most defensive one of all, Catanacho, but I've picked one tactic from every decade of the past 50 years, so you'll have a lot of different ideas depending on what kind of managers you're most inspired by. Right, we're starting off by looking at the Inter Milan 1960s tactic of Catanacho. It means door bolt in English, and it really prioritises having a really good defence and minimising the amount of space the other team can attack into. You'll probably want all three of your defenders to have at least the block playstyle, even better if you can find three with the plus version. Here we've gone with Araujo, Guardiola and Kimpembe, and this would make an absolute elite Catanacho style team. You should also definitely have a sweeper keeper comfortable of playing off his line. Dino Zoff did this in the Inter Milan team that we're copying, and he was a big part of Italy actually going on to win the World Cup. Having two ball winning midfielders in the middle is also really important. If you can find someone like N'Golo Kante or Sergio Busquets that just always seem to be in the right position, then there'll be absolutely no space for the AI to attack into. Finally, you definitely need to make sure you have a target man with some aerial ability and stronghold at play. Marco van Basten was a really good example of this in a later Inter Milan team, but if you can find someone like an Edin Zeko out there that's going to win almost every single header they go for, then you are going to have the absolute ideal Catanacho side. So it's going to be a 5-3-2 formation with a very defensive counter-attacking style of play, with key instructions being to have a very deep defensive line, stay back while attacking on your fullbacks because you don't want them getting forwards, but counter-attack on basically everyone else. You want your midfielders getting in the box, you want your strikers to be up there at all times, and you definitely want to have a sweeper keeper, a ball winning midfielder and a target man because they're going to be the most important player roles in your team. As long as you have a compact defensive shape, discipline defending, and focus on quick transitions with the fastest wingers you can find, then you have definitely got the Catanacho style locked in on your safe. While I really enjoy playing defensively inside career mode, I can see why a lot of people wouldn't really be that interested in doing it, so our next tactic is going to be the total opposite. Total football in fact. From a decade later in the 1970s, of course this tactic was inspired by Ajax and the Johan Cruyff team. It's really about collective movement and having players with really good positional awareness. Everyone can slot in in every kind of area, you can play defenders up front and hopefully they should have the ability to play in that role. This tactic works really well if you can find players with incisive pass or even the plus version playstyle on some of your deeper players and first touch plus or press proven plus on your attackers. You'll have lots of different runners, so someone like Kovacic, if they're playing deep, can easily find the right through ball basically every time. If you have players with first touch or first touch plus, then this basically lets you smash the ball at attackers in tight spaces. This unironically makes Marco Royce and Kai Havertz two of the best total football players on the entire career mode game, despite some of their limitations in real life. So in general, make sure you sign some technically gifted defenders who are comfortable on the ball. People like Matis De Ligt, of course, coming through the Ajax Academy, are going to be very familiar with this style of play. Midfielders who have good stamina work rate and can also pass like Frankie De Jong, another Ajax Academy graduate, are going to be super important as the two deeper players in your 4-3-3 formation. Inverted wingers who can cut inside are also going to be very important. This is exactly what Johan Cruyff used to do when he was a player and not a manager. So in your 4-3-3, you're going to have a very possession-based, fluid movement style of play. When it comes to key instructions, I think a high defensive line is important, but so is pressing after possession loss. When it comes to player roles, have your defenders stepping up, make your midfielders be box-to-box, -box, and make your wingers cut inside with an overlapping fullback. If you can do all this, then I think the total football style of play can still live on inside FIFA career mode. Of course, the total football style of play did actually live on beyond Johan Cruyff being a player and becoming a manager, where it then evolved into something called Tiki Taka. This is the third tactic that I'm going to recommend you use, and it's actually probably the easiest one to implement inside career mode. As long as you've got a 4-3-3 false nine, and you do a lot of possession, quick passing style of play, then you're pretty much set up. The tactic's all about doing this kind of intricate passing and keeping the ball, but also making good chances. Of course, Tiki Taka Plus is by far the best playstyle for this tactic, and if you can find a few regens with the Plus version, you can basically pass the ball around any AI team first time every single time. Gavi, Pedri and Frankie de Jong all have either the Plus version or the regular playstyle, so Barcelona are already set up to dominate if you decide to use them as your Tiki Taka side. 
Outside of the midfield, false nines also very important. Lionel Messi was an important part of the team, of course, as I'm sure you know, but a goalkeeper that can rush out with a high defensive line is also super important. Testegen and Victor Valdez both have saved probably 5 to 10 goals a season by rushing out, whereas a goalkeeper like David De Gea might save more shots, he would probably cost more goals over the long term just because he wouldn't really work in this style of play. Attack minded fullbacks are also very important, with your wingers and midfielders all trying to get close to each other to pass the ball. Having width from people like Jordi Alba and Dani Alves, this was a big deal for the Tiki Taka sides that Barcelona were putting out about a decade ago. To get Tiki Taka put straight into your career mode, make sure you have short passing as your build up style, make sure you're possession based and have a really high defensive line. Make sure you have a playmaker dropping back in the false nine position, you have a couple of ball playing midfielders behind them and you have your fullbacks getting forward whenever possible. For tactics, make sure you're just doing a lot of quick first touch passes with players constantly moving, doing one twos and patient build up. Don't just rush the ball into the box, you can pass around the edge of the box because with Tiki Taka play, you're not really going to be able to get pressed by the AI. Pressing, of course, is a massive deal in football at the minute though, and especially since 2018, I think Liverpool have been one of the best examples of it. With their 4-3-3 Gegen press style of play, which emphasises relentless pressing to win the ball back as quickly as possible, they make a lot of chances just by winning the ball as high up the pitch and transitioning into attack as fast as possible. Really, this tactic is all about having as many relentless midfielders as possible, because if you have relentless plus, you can play constant pressure the entire match. The AI this year really does struggle with pressing. If you get all up in their faces, they'll eventually pass the ball back to their defence and eventually they will just smash the ball as far as they can down the pitch. If you have two rapid centre backs who are also really good in the air, just like Virgil van Dijk and Ibrahim Kanate, you're going to win almost every single header and boom, you can then quickly transition with the fastest wingers that you can possibly find. It's also super easy to put in the game. If you have as many relentless players as possible, you can go constant pressure, but if not, just do press on head heavy touch. Make sure you've got some high work rate forwards on aggressive interception, make sure you've got ball winning midfielders also on aggressive interceptions and also make sure your fullbacks are getting forwards from the defence. Both Trent and Andrew Robertson and even James Milner were really good at getting forwards and getting as many crosses in and this was actually a big part of Liverpool's threat that I think was pretty underrated. Now, I think one of the most underrated teams when it comes to tactics is probably AC Milan from the late 1980s. They used the diamond formation, which is the 4-4-2 diamond when it comes to FIFA, but this tactic really did encourage a lot of fluid attacking movements with players interchanging positions. You can see that it's Cruyff inspired because there was a lot of similarities when it comes to total football when it comes to this kind of diamond formation. If you look back at some of the highlights of the AC Milan team from this era, you'll see a lot of box-to-box -box midfielders that can both play attacking and defensive people like Frank Rijkaard, you'll find attacking midfielders with flair and vision like Roberto Baggio that also put in a shift and are willing to defend, but you'll also find Marco van Basten, someone we've mentioned twice in this video, one of the best poachers of all time with some of the best finishing and off the ball movement possible. In my opinion from what I've seen, van Basten is a top 3 number 9 of all time, his finishing and his movement were so important to how this tactic played and he was so good at doing both of them. I think as long as you're building up through the central diamond with quick transitions and over overlapping fullbacks, then you're pretty much getting the tactic spot on. You go with balanced width and free roam for your central midfielders because there was a lot of creativity in there. You can see them popping up all over the pitch from the left to the right, dropping back into defence to win the ball and then pushing forwards beyond the strikers and that's a big part of this almost total football diamond that AC Milan played in the 1980s. If there's a tactic that you think I should have included in today's video, please let me know in the comments below because I might make a part two. I didn't include things like the WM formation from like the 1800s because probably it's going to be quite difficult to actually describe how that works in career mode terms, but hopefully one of these tactics will fit the save that you're doing at the minute and will make it a lot more fun to do. But thanks for watching, subscribe so you don't miss more content and I'll see you soon. Thank you all for watching, cheers and goodbye.